In this video, we're going to focus on the interaction mode. As you can see here, if I hover around here on an area, it will give us both data points. But if I touch here the specific data point, it will only specify that one. So let's see how we do this. So let's start to look how to create a custom interaction for the tooltip. So to do this, first of all, make sure we have the default data here in charges3.com getting started. We can get the boiler template. Once you're on here and this link, you can find as well in the description box. Scroll down and copy this chunk of code. Next, if you want to support my channel, check out my Patreon page here, where you can get the source code of this video and many others. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to start working on the item here. And first of all, to make this work, I want to have another data set. We're going to have two data sets and we're going to convert eventually these data sets into a line chart. So what I, what I want to do here first, remove so we're removing all the colors except for one. And then another one here, same. Uh, this will be the black sales because these are, this is the black bar eventually, but this will be the black line. Another one here. This will be the red line. Remove everything except for the red color and say here, red sales. Scroll down here. Say this is a line chart. Save, refresh. Now we have two items as you can see here, but they're overlapping each other. What I want to do is I want to make sure that these are stacked on each other. So we're going to say stack on the Y scale and this will be equal to save, refresh. There we are. So what I'm going to do is basically this. Let's go here into this uh, below the scales. We're going to say plugins. We're going to go to the tool tip and within the tool tip, we're going to indicate the mode. And this is very important. Basically, there are multiple modes. And right now we have this mode here, but we could do here, for example, well, the mode we have here is basically when we hover over a specific point, it will be triggered. So that's what we call the point mode. Save, refresh, we see it's exactly the same. If I want to show both, which is the index, for example, if I hover here and the moment I trigger this, it will be showing both. So what I really want to do is that when I'm not hovering on the point exactly, but within the area, it should show both points but the moment i touch one of these data points i want to show specifically the one that we're hovering on top so for that we have to create what you can call a combination of the point and index so we can say here point index but this mode right now does not exist so i'm going to refresh this undo the item just keep it like this and create this new invented mode or create this new one here. So to do this, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say your chart. I want to go to the general chart object. This is not even a chart object of my chart. No, it is the general that will be implemented across the board on every chart if ever you have them. So then I'm going to say your interaction dot modes. So this here is basically all the modes that are currently existing. And to show you this, we're going to say here console log, save, Refresh, open up the developer tab, and you can see here the object, and we get here a few things. We're getting the nearest, the index, the point, the data set, and these are all options, and X and Y as well. So these are all the options. And what we really want to do is basically get here these four value points here that we're going to use, and then apply them here and create a so-called combination. So what I'm going to say here, first of all, I'm going to comment this out. I'm going to grab this and put it in here. Then I'm going to create my new custom mode, which is point index. And this point index is based on a function. And if you remember what we just saw, the four data points for our four arguments, which is the chart, we have the event, and then we're going to get the options. And then there's another one. The final one is the use final position. And that's basically, if I save this refresh, Open up developer tab. All right. Uh, where are we? I forgot here the constant. Uh, or am I? The point index 56. 56. There we are. Of course. So what was the issue? This is a functionality. So I need to make sure that this is a function like that. Save, refresh. So if I go back here, we had here, for example, the point. T, E, I, and S. Of course, this could mean a lot of things, but this is most likely these four here. Just these four, 
but then we give it another name. So now what I can do here is let's dive a bit deeper. What does this truly mean? Well, the chart is just the chart object. I guess that one will be the least uh, important to know for now, but right now you don't see it. And the reason why we don't see this one is we did not activate this point index here. This mode, if I scroll down here, you can see we commented it out because we didn't activate it yet. Now we're going to say, because now we can select this option because we just created it, that we have now a new mode called the point index. If I do this, we should see here now something, but we get a lot of errors, of course, because we didn't define anything else, so it doesn't understand what's going on. So now what I want to do, although we get here the chart object, that's just everything from the chart. We could do it here for the event, the options, and the use final position, but I guess we can just ignore that for now. You can explore them yourself. So what I want to do here is basically, basically two things. If I hover with my mouse cursor somewhere within the chart area that is not a point, show the default, which is the two values related to that specific area. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, is let's create a constant. I'm going to say here the first point items, which will basically function as the point uh, mode. So I'm going to grab everything including here the point and then we're going to create here the arguments and these arguments are basically same here but they're uh, broken down into bits so we're going to just type it in, out you say your chart the event and then we're going to say here the axis and the axis will be x and y which is a string value so x y and then we have a comma we're going to say intersect meaning that if we hit it hit those data points in that case, if it's true, show the specific point value. And the point value will be used vinyl position. All right. So once we have this, we have the first one here. What we could do now is give it a console log to show what's going on here. And let me just remove this one. Save. Refresh. And as you can see here now, it gives an error here because we have like, it's not showing anything until we hit this. The moment we hit this, you can see we get some data here. Now it's length is zero, but somewhere up here probably we'll see here the full length. And what we could do is, let's do this really uh, a bit more better by creating an if statement that if we have a point length, show something. So if, let's say if there's no point items dot length, in that case, do nothing. And then else, this let's save that refresh still getting the error all right interesting basically i just need to grab this one here as you can see here we have this here and here we get the information of that specific point so this works but now we need to have this other one which has no length basically there's no value at all so how do we do this uh we're going here and what i want to do is once you return and what I'm going to return is basically, remember when we use the index, dot index. So I'm just going to use, this is just a combination of both of those. Just use that structure that we have there. And we can say here again, chart, comma, event, comma. Then we're going to say here the axis will be the x axis. That's a string value. Make sure we make it a string value, comma. Then we're going to say intersect equals false. The reason why is I don't want to intersect it. The moment I intersect it, it would indicate that I will touch this point. So I don't want to touch the point um, because that will be considered an intersection. And if that would be the case, it would trigger our other point item. So that's why I don't want that. And then I'm going to use here again, the use final position, put it in here. Next, I guess we can just say it like that. We can remove this, but I want to return here the point item. So if it's like this, we're going to return the point item or not the point item, but the index. So we should see here now something. The moment we touch this, you can see here it gives an error because it doesn't know what to do now because it is not being specified. So what I'm going to do here then, return the point items. So basically, if there is no point items, we're going to return the index version. And if there is, we're going to re return basically the point version. That's really what we're doing here. So then 
there we are. So now we touch a specific one, it will show that if I move here, we move here, and this works absolutely wonderful.